Hi guys. Whoops. Let me see if I can. I'm telling you, I'm gonna spray paint the ceiling white. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> I'm back. I don't know, for some of you that might be a good thing, for some of you it's a bad thing. So, your choice. It's your choice Thursday. <laughs> Come with me to my crazyville or not. All right, that's enough. So, we're going to start working in um, ooh, our little blue journal, our grungy blue, I should say. Let me call it the right word. Let me put my little clip over there. All right, so we're going to... I might be, you know, I might have too much on my plate, but we're going to try. Let me see. It's five after two. Okay. So we're going to work with the um, Janie B. Journals Blue Remember Kit. These are the pockets. Well, I'm going to use them as pockets. That's what my plan today is. Then this is an Etsy share that we're going to use some of this. This is from Digital Hobby Helper. Let me see if I can get up here so you can see digital hobby helper and it's the blue ephemera mix and you know I saw it when I had this other stuff and said this is just gonna this is what I need so I bought it imagine that so aren't these pretty I mean they're you know obviously all shades of blue but they have a little bit of grunge to them so I thought they would go perfect in here let me see. I know I don't have the up and down zoomy thing, but there's that page. And then there's this one. Well, come on, fingers, work with me. There's this one. Oh, that's going to make some cute little tags, or I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I just know it called my name and said, yep, buy me, Candace, buy me. So, of course, I listened to it myself, <laughs> and I bought it. I do wish these were like, you know, bigger size that instead of just offering you the small ones that you could get like, you know, four of these on a big page so you can actually use them for pockets and stuff. It's the only thing that I have to say bad about it. But anyway, but I love them all, all this other one. I might have to go in there and look and see if by chance there is a one, but I don't know. And then there's this one. Isn't that really pretty? I just, I love all these things. So there's that one that we're going to be using in this little project today. And then I just wanted to show you that I got these two. If any of you guys are looking for some, I didn't print them all because, you know, there's 80 of them. But it's from Sweet Pea. Oh, these crazy lights. Let me get up here. There you go. Sweet Pea Curiosities. And you get 80 vintage le letters and telegrams. And I only printed a couple of them because I wanted to use them in this journal. So there's like this one because I just thought, you know, the grungy color and the purpley blues and stuff would go really pretty with that. And then this one I printed because of the the turquoise and the, the kind of coffee grunge. I know I only printed those two pages. I had 80 to choose from, but I printed those. So, but, you know, that's a pretty one if you maybe want to go check them out and see what's up. And then all the, you know, all the other stuff that we're working with is from the um, Janie B. Journals Mystery Bundle number six. Even though it's a green, like I said before, it's a green number, but there's every color ain't the sun. There's purples and blues and just, I can't say enough about her bundle kits. And just so y'all know, I have purchased... 95% of all of my Janie stuff, but I just wanted to, you know, wanted to be on her design team so I could show all her beautiful things, and she's like, yeah, so, but if I need something, she'll send it to me, but I have quite a bit of her stuff beforehand, so, but oh, I just, I love her things, I know, let me go put this over here with my other one so I don't forget where they came from, because you know, a good possibility. Oh, good possibility. It is the possibility. So we're going to use, you know, these are like um, parts that she had on some of the pages, but we're going to, you know, use them for journal cards in our thing. And this is another page on her bundle uh, mystery six pack. Had some glue on there. Um, you know, some tags. and I mean, what are those tickets? Some tags, more tickets and some other tags that we're going to, you know, we're going to use. And then some more. 
And like I said, my favorite little person. I just love that little gesture. It's just so cute. I'd love to be able to wear one of those outfits. <laughs> and then the coin pocket, which I might make this as intended. Who knows? I might change my mind. Y'all know who I am. Okay, so now that I kind of did those, let's see if we can make a couple of things. Whoa, chair just went down. I had it up high. <laughs> Y'all know me, my hydraulic chairs. Oh my gosh. Right, let me find this little, I know that's a little project. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Yoo-hoo. A little piece of paper who's hiding from me. There you go. So I didn't have these yesterday, but instead of remember how um, one of them I did yarn, but if I know y'all save all these little bitty scrap things, but if you have some scrap paper and just weave it in between, that's another way to use your small little scraps if you don't want to use yarn or, or other threads and stuff. But I had already sealed this up, but I sure would have put those in there. So I'll keep them for the next one. <laughs> so... Oh, all right. Now, I'm going to make a pocket for this envelope that we had made. So let me put those. Like I said, this is a, an idea in my head. We'll see. Oh, where's my little note? Okay, here's my note. Let me put my note over here so you can't see what the heck I'm supposed to be doing. Because we're going to see if it's going to work. Because there's always a possibility that it doesn't. All right. So I am going to use... I think I want to do this one, this one, because I'm going to do one on the back pocket and one on the front pocket. I'm going to try to not be so elaborate on this one, but still cute ideas, but not so elaborate. So we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. There's no promises. Because, well, we already have, you know, that one. I got to clean my little thing off. I used it when some of my glue was just a little damp and I like to have a clean blade so I know I can't just onward I got to find another word because apparently I'm going to use that word today <laughs> you know how you get just somehow you start with one word the next thing you know that's all you say all right I haven't been eloquently educated I was, but once again, you use it. If you don't use it, you lose it. And by gosh, that's some of the stuff that you just lose to everything. You just lose everything. Yeah, you know, they should really show you pictures of people like when they were younger and then when they're older, when they don't keep their little brain and bodies up and let you know this is for real. Just because they talk about it in eighth grade home ec class, which, you know, I'm sorry, they need to have those basic classes again because, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people who don't know how to do just basics. And they should teach you what a checkbook is, how to balance a checkbook, and all that good stuff. And that should be boys and girls. Because let me tell you, my son struggled. He had no clue. It took him a long time to learn that. And he learned it the hard way. I'll tell you right now. Lots of NSF overdraw fees and stuff. But, yep, that's what happens when you don't listen to your mama. So this is the Blue Remember kit that we're cutting these pockets out of now my thing is because I'm wanting to put this one on here because it kind of picks up the little pink over there and then I want to put this one on the back page just because that's what I decided I want to do because the you know the back has all that blue and oh wait I'm bad I think I wanted to put it back here yeah that's what I did paper clip there I'll be gluing it on the wrong side I don't know I'm still anyway see I've started the mm, already all right and I've learned that I cannot make ephemera and stuff just because I have to have a plan because it messes with my brain too much so I have to have like the kit that I'm going to use so I can kind of have it in my head because I tried doing that and it, my brain just, it doesn't work that way because it wants to put something inside something. Okay, enough of that. 
Y'all need no more of my stuff. Okay, so my problem with this is it's, I want to put this envelope that we made in here, but it's going to, I'm going to be pushing it, so I want to back it on some craft stock paper, which I have back here. Hold on. I'm coming. Okay. So, let me move this out of the way for a minute, since I don't need it while we're doing this. But I want to go around here probably an eighth of an inch well maybe a little more so that way because I'm going to soak now I'm going to stick here I'm going to stick to this plan I know so indecisive Oops. so I have to tell you it is yet another beautiful day out there oh I saw I had to watch the AccuWeather is what we get. I watched the AccuWeather and I saw the um, the people in Jersey, well, South Jersey, I guess it was called. Um, oh gosh, I lost my, there he is, my little eraser. Um, man, they got some serious water and some serious flooding. Oh, hey y'all, I know I have a couple of Jersey girls out there. Send me a little note, let me know y'all are okay. So... But yeah. You know, it's true. People just don't realize how dangerous water is. That, you know, you might escape the hurricane and all that good stuff. But that water, you know, has to drain down. And then, you know, down here, um, you know, there's still a lot more to come. Because once it drains from... I mean, once it rains up top, it, you know, it, it drains down here to us, to these lower states, and then down to the Gulf, which has to bypass all the rivers and creeks and stuff down there in Louisiana, Mississippi and stuff. And they are just packed right, you know, packed full themselves. And so that always causes extra flooding, you know, even up to a week afterward. And it's just, and sometimes people forget that and they just kind of, I don't like that little spot. They just kind of go about their way, you know, doing their thing. Well, the next thing you know, here comes round two, and you're just not even prepared for it. And, you know, that those that rise in water is, is definitely a danger, and people just do not realize that just because, you know, you think that it's okay to drive, drive through a puddle... You don't know what that puddle really is. It could be a sinkhole just waiting to swallow you up. So, I remember when we were kids. Oh, my God. We were stupid. You know, as soon as the rain came, our streets would flood. We'd be out there on our bicycles riding in there. You know, water up to our stomachs. You can't even get your bike through. You know, because it's past the wheels and stuff. But, you know... <laughs> Kids, we're stupid, <laughs> but it sure was fun. But man, you know, when you get older and you see that stuff, you think, oh my gosh, why did our parents let us do that? Well, that's because they just wanted us out of their hair. <laughs> Y'all know it. It's the truth. Oh, but man, we had some fun. Oh, man, it was nothing like playing in that deep water. Oh, it's like having your own big old warm swimming pool. Oh, we didn't care about what was floating in that water. Or anything. Like I said, kids are dumb. We're so stupid. But man, that was that was the bomb. And then, you know, well, in the subdivision we lived in when I was younger, we kind of lived like on the corner and it was kind of a little low. And um, so I, I'm from Biloxi, so y'all might want to write that word down because there might be something special for that too. I got to write myself a note down. But got to figure out how to spell it too. I know some of y'all know how to spell it because you know where it is, which amazes me. But, um, yeah, I mean, we just, kids are dumb. I just re-inked this, but you know, you can't daub these things. You got to swirl to pick up the ink. Which, you know, takes time. <laughs> that is what's nice about those um, foam pads is, you know, that you just get to, 
to daub it and you get your ink but you know these little fabric ones you definitely have to do some swirly some swirly birds But, oh, anyway, when we were younger, I mean, we would get <laughs> our stupid floaties on. Our, we'd blow up our little beach rafts. And, uh, you know, <laughs> we'd, we'd lay in our beach raft, hold a rope while somebody drove the bicycle. So, they were, you know, we were surfing. I'm telling you. Because, I mean, you know, it was a good 12 inches of water or a little bit more in some places. And you got to go pretty far, at least like two houses worth. You know, because like on our corner, we were... We were on this side, and then the eaves were on this side, and then there was a ditch behind us, and so it always rose the two levels. So the way our house was, which is weird, I live on, I just now thought about that, I live on property like that now. Hmm, strange. But, you know, you'd have like the ditch in the back, and then we'd have like one tier of our yard, and then it came, which was unusual for there, but that's just how this whole part of the street was that kind of ran along this I'm sure it was just a ditch. It wasn't even a, you know, <laughs> anything fun. But, um, and then we had like one tier that was a, a good step. And then another, the second tier is like where we always had our swing set and our whirly bird and our merry-go-round. I mean, just where we played. And then there was like the next hit kind of hit part that were, the houses were in the street level. And, uh, but it would always, when we had hurricanes and stuff, it would always raise... <coughs> to the the second thing and like one time our swing set floated down into the creek and then my dad had to you know like put it in with some concrete after that but um yeah but oh but anyway like you know there was a house here house here and then there you know you know back then in the subdivisions you actually had spacing between houses not like nowadays where you can you know like maybe put your hand out say hey shake your neighbor but we would actually have like our house, the Eads house. I don't remember the other people, but I had my friend Penny and then other people. So you could actually get on your little, your little raft and with the bicycle and you could, you know, go at least, like I said, our house here, one, two, two houses down. And, and before you couldn't, you know, you was dragging bottom on your raft and you didn't want to bust your raft because you get in trouble. Because, you know, it's just one of those little blow up things, but, you know. You wouldn't have a raft when you went to the beach <laughs> or to the, actually we went to the river because locals don't swim in the, in the Biloxi beach. It's just, no, mm -mm. it's not clean. So you know who the tourists are when you see people in the beach. It's, it's, it's true. I know I've told y'all this before, but way back when in the beginning of time, well, at least when I was little, up before 1969 when Hurricane Camille came, because there used to be. It was called Ship Island. It was one big island out there. Well, Hurricane Camille came and broke broke the island in half because that's where the hurricane came through and it just cut the whole thing. So there's Ship Island, which is actually where an old Spanish fort was where they have cannons and everything. And you can take a boat out there. I mean, it's a, it's a big tourist thing. And it's a circle because, you know, uh, duh, why don't we live in circle houses when you live in Hurricane Alley? Um, because, you know, the hurricane never broke broke it down but that is the hottest sand in the world i mean you literally walk on that sand and it goes rrr, 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 rrr. It, it barks like a dog because it is so hot and you cannot walk on that without just doing that Woo, with your little feet in the air type thing you have to have shoes because it is the hottest sand ever but anyway the hurricane came and literally split the island well it's like a third over here and two thirds over there it's inhabitable this is where the the fort is and then this is just like um lots of trees they have wild boars and all kinds of stuff on there this is the island we got stuck on once on marine biology and then another one because we listened to lee sullivan twice but anyway we got stuck on there um almost missed the one we were in ocean springs but anyway that's a story for another time so i'm trying to decide do i want straight pockets <laughs> or um a hole punch in there but if i put this in here then ugh, hello you might be able to figure out that's a pocket and I think I might want to stick with the squares so yep just talk myself out of that but anyway so the Hurricane Camille in 1969 um, broke busted the island in half because when it was all one island then it was the um, all around here where the beaches are which I don't know how many miles it is from there from the beach to you know here because Biloxi's a man-made beach and um, and on good days, you can, you know, be way over here on the beaches and you can see, 
like this little speck of, of, of trees out there with a ship on, but it's, it's way out there. And um, so it broke the island in half, which caused the circulation not to, to circulate like it used to because the water used to be blue. You could collect um, seashells. They had hermit crabs all over the place. And, I mean, it was just, you know, a regular beach, kind of like you see in, in Mobile or down in Florida where it actually has, you know, greenish-blue water. Nope, not in Biloxi. You got this color water. I call it swamp water because it's it's brown and it's just... No, but if you go out to the islands, to the southern part of the islands, you know, other the, the part that's actually in the Gulf of Mexico, now the water is, you know, clear out there, but it's deep as can be. You know, it's it's a it's a dangerous place. You really can't swim out there because you'll fall off of the the shelf and just be taken away. But um, <laughs> but anyway. Um, so yeah, you, like I said, you just know who the locals are and who, and who the ones that are at the military base or that's moved in because locals don't swim in that water. Not after 1969 anyway. And, uh, unless you want to catch something because you sure will catch that red tide and everything else because they just have, it's so warm and it's so shallow. I mean, you could walk out probably a half a mile some places not even I'm looking for a thing not even be the water be up to your chest and uh, so it's real shallow water so everything you know stays real warm so just imagine you know all kinds of stuff growing there but um so yeah after Hurricane Camille our beaches were never the same um but it doesn't stop others so we would always go up the river and uh that's where the locals went you know you're on your boats and you go up there on the weekend and everybody would ski and be in the water because it was you know some places brackish water with a little mixture of salt and fresh but then when you got up a little further into the river it was um fresh water because it was so far up there but yeah we lived we lived on the water on you know in the weekends when we were little when we uh when we lived on the coast we were all my dad we always had a a, a speed boat it was always you know a boat um, cause they loved to ski. My, my mom and dad and all their friends, there was, you know, groups of people they work with. I mean, it was, I mean, we all just spent the weekend at the river and uh, we never camped, you know, we always went, you know, went back every day, but we had like this one sand barge that like everybody knew this was, you know, these five families and, you know, you better not park there cause that was ours, but we'd always get there like early in the morning, like seven o'clock. We'd all get up, pack our stuff. And, and head down there sometimes when it started getting you know a little busier um, the women and the kids would um, head there before the guys in their boats because they would park have to park the boats down <coughs> at a marina and stuff to, to dock and in, in, um, and then drive up river so you know of course the the grown boys would race themselves up the river and stuff men are so goofy but um, and then we would just like here's our the little beach sand dune and then there was like a, a blacktop road back here and you could walk down this hill okay I didn't realize there was you know some little hilly things but the hills are nothing like here I mean it's just that's nothing compared to here but you know you have to walk down so you know the 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 mamas would send all the kids with all the heavy stuff down this little trail and um and then we blow our rafts up and everything we put everything on on the thing like we'd swim across the hibachis and just whatever the ice chest and we you know we'd stupid us us kids would just you know go down and then we'd swim across and get over here and then the ladies would have um, the mamas, you know, the ladies would have everything all set up and then all the men would, you know, come around the bend. Well, they, let me see, here's the, here's the barge. Here's the, they all back here, they, all the guys in their boats would come around the bend. And then everybody would park in and have their little stuff. And then we'd tie them up and then, you know, we would play and then we'd go off boating and skiing and everything. I never, I never skied because I don't like water in my nose. I like to ride in a boat. <laughs> I don't like to participate in the water. <laughs> oh, and then when we moved to Texas, um, when I was in the sixth grade, when we went to Austin, uh, my dad decided he wanted to have a sailboat. So we got a sailboat, and uh, yeah, that was that was interesting. And then of course Jaws came out. So oh my God, yeah, I don't think I was ever the same after that one. 
and then because we used to really never wear um, life jackets because we all could swim I mean we were just like second nature's I gotta put these underneath the block so they can dry flat because we were just second nature little water babies because we you know grew up on the water but man after that stupid movie came out I remember we used to go to to a lake I mean it was actually closed in lake and um, I, was, I would tell my dad, oh, I don't know if I want to go in there. And I would sit in the middle of the sailboat with, this, with my life jacket on. I mean, this is what Jaws did to me. And um, so, and he's like, you know, a shark can't get in here because it's closed off. It's fresh water, blah, blah, blah. I told him, I said, I don't care. I don't believe you. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. How many of y'all were traumatized by Jaws as a child? I was. I even hated going to the bathroom thinking that fool was going to come out of the toilet. I'm, I know. I was 12, y'all. And um, so anyway, I had something else I wanted to do while I was running my mouth. I wanted to do this pocket. But I have to go over there real quick and get what this is so you can see. So, shoot. Um, hold on. Let me see. We got that one. I thought there was something else. I know, I know. I need to write down what I'm what I'm doing. Oh yeah, we're gonna we'll put these in real quick while those things are drying, because this is the little pockets that we made with the um, with the books, our books that were black and white pages, and then we colored them with markers. So we're gonna <coughs> excuse me, glue these onto here, and then I want the little tabs to you know kind of hang off the page, but. But yeah, oh, to be young and a child again. I, and then kids, you know, kids nowadays, they don't even live that fun, crazy life like we used to. I mean, it was awesome. I have to tell you, it was, it was cool being a kid in the early 70s. <laughs> oh, and see, now I'm thinking this background is just a little too blah for me so I'm wondering do I want to put that this is going to be too much against there on the page no let's just cut a little strip down here and pretend it's some paper washi oh but yeah I mean you know you could just go out for the day I don't have to worry about anything not anymore it's so scary to let your kids go off and about. And then everybody's on the internet playing all these games instead of outside. You know, doing crazy kid stuff. Yeah, I think I want a little blue right there. Alright, so let's do that. What's y'all? some of y'all's fondest childhood memories? Like I said mine was just always at the river always on a boat I you know I have to admit if you've never been on a, a, a good sized sailboat man there's nothing like riding those waves and having that water splash on you oh my gosh oh okay so I'm gonna tell when we lived in Austin, we used to go to this place called Medsford's Dam, and they actually had it. Well, this the place is still there, a nudist colony called Hippie Hollow. Well, once again, I was 11, 12. Never seen a naked man <laughs> or naked people other than, you know, your family and yourselves. Um, and we were sailing by there, and, um, you know, my mom came unglued. Because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm yelling, why is that man sitting on that rock whittling a stick? Well, use your own imagination. So, you know, my mom jumped across the sailboat. So, you know, my little sister couldn't see because I've already seen, you know, it's like, what was that, that Lee Greenwood saw, that song, The Streak, um, with Ethel, you know, Ethel. Put your clothes back on because she's out there, you know, streaking, doing her little thing. But that was such a cute little song. And so she jumps across. Well, the the mast, you know, because we're out there. There's there's wind thing. 
swings around, knocks her off, I mean slap off the boat into, actually the boom, actually into the water and, you know, needless to say, we weren't looking at the, the cliffs with the, with the, the people who need some suntan on there that stuck out, stuck out like a sore thumb, but oh yeah, that, that's my first remembrance of sailing in uh, Medsford Dam is uh, Hippie Hollow and, and that man sitting on the, the ledge whittling a stick. I was like, oh my God. So, you know, now that you're older, you're like, well, hello. But yeah, but it's still there. It's still a full-blown nudist colony. And, uh, but you know, <laughs> it's true. Keep Austin weird. Um, Austin is one. Oh, and then there was one down at Hiller Park. Um, it's still, it's still there too. It's a topless beach. And so here's here's the city park i mean it's a big old city park and then there's like this section over here it's i don't even know what it's called <clears throat> but this is hiller park <clears throat> and then this is like a big stretch of, of of water that everybody can swim in and then you know regular people with clothes on well at least tops on they're all over here and there's soccer fields i mean it, it's it's a city park and all these people over here it's it's a topless beach so yeah hello but you know, topless is better than full-blown, you know, especially when you're little. <laughs> but <clears throat> that was, you know, a little interesting. So needless to say, when we sailed, we didn't sail that close to that side of Medsford's Dam. But uh, because, yeah, and then, ooh, my mom, I mean, my dad was in so much trouble because my mom just knew that he did that. I'm sorry, the wind did it. <laughs> if you wouldn't have acted such a fool, maybe, you know... You wouldn't have been knocked overboard and just explain to people, well, he's out there with, I don't know, with a fishing pole. You could have said something. I mean, we were young. We were stupid. We would have believed you. So, but anyway, yeah. So that's another story of, from my childhood. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. And now I'm wondering if I shouldn't put another strip down this side, too. Just to have a little blue. See, I didn't talk myself into it. All right. I think this was... I put my rulers up. Now I can't find them. About three-fourths. <clears throat> but yeah. We had some good times as a kid. You know, and then there comes the divorce. So all you good times is over with. <clears throat> but yeah. And then my dad married a lady, Rita. She, oh my God. She's my stepmom. She's the one I, you know, I talk to all the time. And after he, um, <laughs> Rita does not like the water, does not like to be on any kind of boat, shape or form or nothing. And so he was always trying to get her to go sailing. And, and she was like, nope, you married the wrong woman. So, you know, he just... He kept the boat for quite a few years after they got married, but then he decided to sell it. And, because, uh, you know, like I said, Rita, Rita would not get on the boat for nothing. But the funniest thing is after he passed away, um, Rita and my my half-brother and half-sister, they decided they were going to take a cruise. And so, you know, Rita reluctantly agreed to go on, on this cruise, you know, in memory of, of our dad. And um, even though it was a big old cruise ship, she said she's never been back on one since. She did, you know, she just, she said, ah, I like my feet on the ground. I don't care how big the boat is. So, but yeah. Oh, but yeah. Thank God my dad married her because he had a good life after marrying that lady. So. Yeah, my um, my grandma, her. I'm guessing must be my grandpa's sister. I don't or I don't know who. It was someone because 
Well, no, I don't know. I think it was her aunt and uncle that would come down from up upstate, from New York, from somewhere. And um, what was his name? Oh, I could have told you. Start with a G, like Gino or something. But um, he would always come and stay because he would call her Aunt Irene. So I'm guessing his it was his mom and dad that would come down. So it has to be one of my grandfather's people. I don't know. I don't remember that, the, how it came to be. But, oh, Angelo. That was his name. Oh, Angelo. And Angelo was was a gay man before gay was, you know, public and everything. But, oh, I love that man. He was just, he would wear these um, platform shoes that were like um, saddle shoes or whatever, you know, that used to be the white with the brown and you laced them up. But he was just, and he was always so, I mean, dressed to a T and just, you know, I just always thought he was a, a nice dressed man, but yeah, no, he was on the other side of the fence, but I loved him. And so they would come down, um, in their camper and we would go to the, to the beaches every year and we would collect these crazy hermit crabs because, um, I guess his mom, I think her name was Dolores. See, I was so little. I was only like five, five, six and seven. And then. I guess after they passed away, he just didn't come back down anymore. I don't know. I wonder why. I see. I wish my Nana was still alive so I could ask her. So I could write some of these family things down. So I could have written them down in a journal. Because I sure not, you know, hate not having good family stories to pass on to your kids and stuff. Because you just, you know, you're young and you're stupid. And you don't think that it's important to, to know those stories and pass them down. So people... Write stories in your journal and tell your children to keep these and read these and, and pass this pass the history down. Oh my gosh, please keep the family history going. Even if it's bad history, just have, have the history. We need more history. We need more of our own history. All right, so, but yeah, we used to go and we would collect these um, hermit crabs. And then she would, they had a, a gift shop up on the Jersey Shore somewhere up there, up north. I don't know, because they were from New York area. And she would sell these crazy hermit crabs. So they would drive one year. Oh, my gosh. One year, the hermit crabs got loose out of their tank. So they're all walking all around in their camper because they had a, an RV. That they would drive down in and park it out in my grandparents because they lived on a circle. And so... And this, this camper didn't even fit on the circle. They had to get permission for this, this old house that was over here to park in their yard because it wouldn't fit on there. But they were driving home one time and one crawled up. I'm guessing he's my uncle. I don't know. I don't remember him. I'll remember her. Um, we crawled up his leg while he was driving. And, you know, and he starts screaming. And then, you know, and Dolores is like, what, what? Gosh, I wish I could remember his name. And so, and then they realized that they had these huge tanks, um, huge fish tanks in the back that they put like the screen lids on there to keep the hermit crabs in there. Well, if any of y'all have had a hermit crab, they're smart and sneaky. And I guess they all get banded together and decided they were going to, you know, get up top on the side and, and lift this crazy thing off. Well, there was hundreds and hundreds of hermit crabs just <laughs> all around in their camper. And how they didn't wreck or, I mean, oh my gosh, I don't know. But I wish I could have been there to see that because, you know, the story that my Nana told was, was quite interesting. And the fact that, oh shit, oops, sorry y'all. Oh, I glued this backwards because I was talking about hermit crab. Oh my God, can I save it? Oh, but yeah. Oh, let me see. Gosh. Come on, art glitter glue. Give me a break. Oh, no. Dang, nabbit. But yeah, all these hermit crabs were just running around. And hermit crabs, like, climb up the walls and, and everything. And so they were just, oh, my gosh, they were everywhere. And, oh, yeah. So that would have been a place to be a fly on the wall to watch that and for them to have to pull over and to collect all these hermit crabs that are you know just uh, all around in there let's see if I did any damage 
darn it. But yeah, so that I I would have died if something was crawling up my leg. So, but yeah, that's what my granddaughter has. Um, Gary, <laughs> Gary the hermit crab. Gary's lived for almost two years now. So yeah, doggone. So this one goes here. Now I'm gonna have to repair those because I ripped them off. Crap. <sighs> Sorry. Where's my little inkies? I know it's gonna, not going to make much of a hill of beans. But see, I wasn't paying attention because I was telling a story instead of crafting. Trying not to be quiet. Oh. Alright, can we, can we fix this? And the answer is going to be no. Because it's going to show because it's right there where it pulled off. Alright, so... Doggone. Should have paid more attention. So, 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 so. Do we have a gnat in here? I can't kill him. Every time I try to kill him, he runs for me. He drives me nuts. I mean, does it look like I, I did it oops, or does it look like it was part of the design? Oh. I think I'm going to leave it like part of the design because I'm going to tear it up too bad if I don't. It's just ink around here makes them darker. Is this allowed in journal making? Oh, sorry. Whoever gets this. I just think if I put some more on there, it's going to be like blatantly obvious that So I can put a strip across here, but then I won't have any up top and bottom. All right, let's let's bring out the stencil. And let's just stencil some flowers in here. Oops, I'm trying to get ink on that thing. Okay, where's my thing right here? So you know we're gonna shh 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 shh. Sh See, Lori, you got the wrong kind of makeup brushes. Mine. Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> it's so funny. She writes, my makeup brushes doesn't make that noise. And I told her, I said, well, you got the wrong kind of makeup brushes. You bought the wrong kind. Because mine goes shh, 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 shh. All right. Let me see. Let me see. Put that bad boy up top before I do it again. Oh, I can't believe I did that. See, I'm going to be so upset with myself now. Okay, I got to move them over. Oh, okay. So, all right. So, that's not so bad. Let me put a little stencil on the bottom up top. You are the top. Get away from me. <laughs> Don't let me touch you again until I need you. Oh, Man, our mall, the Edgewater Mall, they used to do some elaborate Christmas decorating. Oh, man, that was like the place to go. All these animatronics and, oh, I miss that. I wish, I know Christmas isn't supposed to be about that, but it is pretty to see it. And, you know, why not enjoy some of the beautiful things for the season as long as you worship the right thing? You know, as long as you acknowledge that what it's for, I still... And even to this today, our friend Cassie, who came, Cassie came to, you know, dog sit while I was gone. She's like, why do you have some Christmas in every room? Because I have a little something Christmas in every room. Because I love Christmas. My grandmother loved Christmas, and I love Christmas. So every room has a little something decorated of Christmas in there. And that's just how I roll. Now, my grandma, and I could see myself turn into, I, okay, I've officially turned into her, semi, sort of, kind of. I have a tall pencil Christmas tree, because our Christmas tree from Texas doesn't fit in this house, because our ceilings aren't tall enough, and blah, 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 blah. 
so I had to buy these these skinny I call them they're not even they're not Charlie Brown trees but you know sometimes I call them Charlie Brown trees even though they're really not Charlie Brown trees they're cute but they're tall skinny pencil trees and so I usually put one on either side of um, the TV and the TV stand at Christmas and then have you know have the lights on there and everything well my grandmother had this big tree well she used to have four trees in the house so that woman oh lord bless her she she definitely she spoiled us rotten with christmas stuff i mean that lady decorated i mean man it was awesome i wish i could find some of those childhood pictures but oh, my mom got them all and didn't share so anyway um but she used to have four full-size Christmas trees in that house. And um, and then, you know, every year, like, a tree would die. He wouldn't survive. And so she, you know, because, like, the one in the game room. Well, actually, the front room is the one that died first. Because, you know, she would wire it together every year with all these wires. Because my grandpa would tell her, I'm not buying another Christmas tree. You know, this is just too many. But yet she had all, I mean, deck. oh, my gosh. It was just awesome. It was a little winter wonderland. In the middle of Biloxi, in, in the hot, 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 you know, like I said, sometimes we were in in our in our um, shorts, Thanksgiving and Christmas in seventy degree weather because I mean it's just it's hot down there. Um, so, but you know, she would wire these trees together every year, and then finally, you know, it just couldn't be wired anymore. And then my grandpa's like, "We're not buying another one, Irene. You don't need it." Ba -da 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 -da. So finally, you know, the front room, you know, he died first, and then the the next tree was in the um one of the game room ones because she would put them on the corners in the game room so one corner of the game room one and then she got to where she would wire parts and pieces so she'd have this frankenstein christmas tree with all these other pieces that you know the limbs and stuff hadn't fallen off of because you know back in the day they didn't make they didn't make christmas trees kind of like they do now the artificial ones i mean those are it will I mean, they cost a fortune but you know some of them are just works of art and just you know god let me make sure i've got them the right way yes i do um but so she would just you know had got down to where she only had the one in the game room and then one in the the family room and and then finally the game room one just you know it wasn't worth trying to wire together anymore and it's just it's crazy so then she ended up with the big one in the in the family room well she would leave it up year round and she decorated it for every season like you know she'd leave christmas off and then she'd have all her little new year's things which are usually angels and stuff like that and then um towards the end of the middle of january you have to put mardi gras up because mardi gras either falls third week of january or middle of february just depending on what's going on so she always had a mardi gras tree and then you know spring came around and easter came around but i mean she had some i mean these trees were just awesome well you know long story short now i've left one penciled tree i guess he's maybe two foot wide i guess that's about yeah about two feet wide and then six foot tall and so i leave white lights on him and i just you know put like different little things on there right now that i've got some some birds on there and a few flowers and then um the middle of the month i'm gonna i'm gonna put some on my little halloween junk on there <laughs> so yes but it's so pretty to look at in the evening when you know with the lights on and stuff and just like candlelight you know ambiance it's just really nice okay so now that i saved that bad boy there you go oh my gosh i can't believe i did that <laughs> oh thank god i saved it because i'd have cried y'all have saw me cry but we're gonna make tags for in here <laughs> all right so let me let this dry let me go sew my other things so we can do that real quick and then i will be right back and um so remember the word we had yesterday okay so you're going to be using that word and you're going to be doing something with it in the comment box. And you have to tell me right in there, what's your favorite color rose or something? Something with the color. It has to have the, the capital R for roses, plural, and your favorite color. And then I will tell you the rest of it. So that's it. All right, let me go sew these other little pockets around so we can put them on the front, and then um, we will call this one a video. So let me roll real quick. I'll be right back. 
Okay, guys, I'm back. I sewed around it, and whoops, and I'm knocking everything over. And I put my little glue on the end, and I think I'm going to leave these little strings. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to leave them on here for now, and then if I want to trim them off later, I'll trim them off later. But let me just glue my little side down. But like my grandma, she had all those like animated Christmas things, like the snowman that snored and, and the little blanket came came up and down off his little feet while he was snoring on this little bed. He was like two foot long. And then just all these little I I mean gosh, she had some stuff. And it was just a wonderful, a wonderful place to be at Christmas time. Oh my gosh. I mean, just really wonderful, wonderful, wonderful memories as far as Christmas goes. And I guess that's why I love it so much, because it just reminds me of her. But, all right, there's that pocket. And, you know, we'll decorate that later. Oh, I was supposed to do something else to this pocket, and I didn't, so I'm going to have to do it on another one. Because oh, I was running my mouth because I got upset about gluing that other thing wrong. Oh, I'm like, where'd it go? I hope it's going to fit in here. Yes, it does, and we still have room to put some junk in there. All right, so let's put that on here. So that's going in there. And then we'll go ahead and glue this one. Since you can't really write on the back, we're going to glue it on the back. So that way, but then it goes into this thing. So maybe not. Maybe I need to do a corner thing on here. Because I don't like how it's going to glue into the bend. See, I know, y'all. I had a lady, Stacy. She's like, "Oh, don't worry about it being even. It's got unified." And I said, "I can't ununify something." I said, "It's got to." I said, "I'm trying. I'm working real hard to put something on there, cockeye." But and I am. I'm telling you, I'm gonna do one. I'm just gonna slap together, and all my stuff's gonna be just. I mean, like this and like that. I'm gonna do it. I I, I promise you. <laughs> I'm working up my nerve, but I'm gonna do it. Okay, so we're going to put that on there because, like I said, I didn't like how it didn't bend around on here so well. We'll, we'll put a corner, some corner or a belly band or something on here. Oops, i got to hold it down a little bit more. All right. So. All right. Remember... The word and your favorite color of it. I can't believe I forgot to do what I was going to do with these on there, but that's because I was running my mouth, running my mouth. Okay, so let me just smoosh it down one more time, and then there you go. We have, we put. We saved these pockets. Oh my gosh. Oh, I don't know. I still, anyway, it looks like it was supposed to be part of there. But anyway, but isn't that pretty? Didn't those turn out good? I mean, I'm sorry. I hate to just, you know, brag on myself, but let me pat my little back. Um, that wasn't my back, it's back of my elbow, but those are really pretty. So get your markers out and color your white flowers and your books and pages and everything else and turn them into a double pocket or even one big tuck spot but anyway so we did that and then we put this one on here and I'm gonna go ahead well I'm not gonna put that in there because this is gonna remind me that I need to put something in the back of it and we have to decorate it so I will work on that and then this is you know our little project that we will do and then this is the back one that I chickened out on, decided I didn't want it back here. So let me put a double little paper clip on here. <laughs> I know, I'm special. <laughs> oh, y'all. Okay, so there you go. That's these couple little things. Like I said, I'm trying to, you know, be simple but pretty and not too much stuff in here. So it's not so, so much, but yet still really pretty. I know. Just shut up, Candace. All right, guys. So 
I will clip this on. I gotta go put my chicken in the crock pot so we can have food for dinner because I'm making um, baked chicken with bay leaves and green beans, salad, and wild rice. So that's what we're having for dinner. So I gotta go get it in the crock pot. So anyway, I will see you guys later. Thanks for sharing um, some of your day with me. Thanks for sharing your time with me. And thanks for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. So lots of kisses, lots of love. Just love, 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 love. And I will see y'all later. All right, bye guys.